So I would like to take this opportunity to thank the DAC and congratulate them on their hard work. And the DAC members are here today. Um, they're a lot of the people in the yellow vests. You can go up and talk to them. Or we have the amazing Louise Dwyer right in the middle there. Hand up. <laughs> um, so have a chat with them and let them know if you have any ideas on how we can continue to improve access and inclusion for people living with a disability and their carers also within our community. Council's Universal Access and Inclusion Plan outlines a range of strategies and actions to improve access to council services, improve access to information, support, and also infrastructure. It is so important that all members of our community have equal access to our facilities, information and support. And that's what this day is all about. So I'd like to thank the organisers and the community groups who have come together to organise this fantastic event. I believe David mentioned most of them and I won't try because I know I'll probably leave someone out, but your support is very much appreciated. So I'll hand back to David and I hope everybody has a wonderful day. Certainly the weather for it. Thanks, Fern. I just thought I'd mention uh, International Day of People with a Disability, the theme for 2015. Inclusion matters. Access and empowerment for people of all abilities. The estimated 1 billion people living with disabilities worldwide face many barriers to inclusion in many aspects of society. As a result, people with disabilities do not enjoy the same access to society on an equal basis with others, which includes areas of transportation, employment and education, as well as social and political participation. The right to participate in public life is essential to create stable democracy, active citizenship and reduce inequalities in society. Some of the sub-themes of the day today are making cities inclusive, and accessible for all. As a past member of the Disability Advisory Committee, I can certainly say that Greater Shepparton Council is doing their bit to achieve this goal and is probably well ahead of a number of other uh, towns around this area. Improving data around disability and statistics is an important sub-theme to ensure that we capture everything that is out there about those people that fit into this particular day. But on, on the weekend of my 22nd birthday, I decided to take the weekend off work and went away with four other mates who we were going up, up Koryong, up into the hills to go camping, full driving, fishing, and just doing what young boys do, having fun. Um, it was late on the Friday night because we'd all worked on the Friday, so by the time we all packed our stuff, got our camping gear together and got going, it was fairly late. I... I was a passenger in my own vehicle and it was, it was raining and we didn't know the road. On a right hand bend, we were uh, the third car, there were three cars in convoy, we were the third car and we failed to make it around the bend. We're, the back end of the vehicle slipped out on us uh, and then we went over a 40 foot embankment, we rolled the car, hit a tree and finished up in a lagoon. Um, as a result of the crash, I dislocated two vertebrae at waist level, which has let, left me paralysed waist level down, so I can't feel or move anything from the waist. Um, when, when we had the crash, we were fairly remote, so we didn't have phone reception or anything, and mates were going to try and get me out of the vehicle, but I knew straight away that I'd broken my back, so I, I didn't let them move me, because I didn't know what other... Uh, damage that may or may not do to my back. Ultimately now it wouldn't have made much difference because the spinal cord was severed, but at the time didn't know that. So uh, one of them jumped in the car and went to get help while the others sort of tried to support me and stabilise me. One of my best mates growing up, you know, I'd lived up the road from him, um, Growing up as a kid, we were all we did everything together. Hadn't seen him for a few years um, after school, and it was nice having him there that night because he he was there with me the whole time. 
and when he when he got to me, he had to go through waist deep water in the middle of winter, so it was pretty cold. And he was able to get his hands down behind my back, and he could feel a dislocated vertebrae. And I told him that I broke my back, but he he basically confirmed that I'd done something fairly fairly major. He's, he said he, he couldn't tell what, what was going on, but there was something definitely not right having the vertebrae sticking out the way it was. So I was laying in the car in the cold and dark, knowing myself that I'd broke my back because of the amount of pain I was in and the fact I couldn't feel my legs. Um, and I, I kind of was thinking, wheelchairs aren't that bad, are they? Surely I can, I can get around in a wheelchair. But that'll be right. Um, little did I know how hard it was going to be and, and the other internal functions that are affected from, from a spinal cord injury. It's not just the physical disability that I've got, it's the, the bowel function, the bladder function, the sexual function, all those things that go along with, with the disability. And also the, the skin care, pressure sores and, and injuries you do to your legs and, and that and not know it's life slower and harder. But um, I've learned to deal with everything in the best way I, I can.